My research focuses on the question of how we can restore motor function in people with spinal cord injury that can no longer control their arms and hands. My work is part of a collaboration between the Department of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation and the Applied Physics Lab at Johns Hopkins, where we're working on solving this problem with brain machine interfaces or BMIs. A BMI works by using electrode arrays to read from a person's brain while they attempt to do or to think about an action. The BMI then decodes these thoughts and then sends these decoded thoughts directly to a device like a robotic arm, bypassing the injured spinal cord. Ours is the first group to use electrode arrays to read from both sides of the brain. A practical obstacle to BMI use is that decoders need to be recalibrated often. So for example, if a BMI user sits down to have a drink of water, they might initially be able to reach toward the cup accurately and decisively, but after several minutes, they may start to miss the cup or they might not be able to hold it as steadily. So in these cases, this might indicate that the decoder is no longer satisfactory. And so the user may need to stop for several minutes while a new decoder is set up. So we think that this is because brain signals are constantly fluctuating and that, and that we can make decoding smoother if we can better understand the sources of instability in different brain regions. To study this, we ran a series of experiments over a few months where we asked a BMI participant to repeatedly attempt a simple wrist task in pace with a metronome. We looked at stability in terms of which parts of each electrode array were getting consistently activated and how similar the signaling was across the sensory and motor areas of both brain hemispheres. First, we zoomed in on individual sites or units within each hemisphere and area. And our two main findings here were that signals originating in the hemisphere on the opposite side of the brain to the attempted movement were more stable than those originating from the same side and that signals from sensory cortex were more stable than signals from the motor cortex. From here, we then zoomed out and then asked at a sectional level how the signals within each part of the brain interact with each other as an ensemble. And at this network level, we found that both areas of the brain were equally stable and that this seemed to hold up over time. We can think of these results in terms of an analogy with an orchestra. So you can imagine that each area of the brain is a different section. The contralateral motor area might be the strings and the ipsilateral sensory might be the percussion, for instance. Now within each section, players are going to have different abilities to stay in tune or to keep a rhythm. But as a whole ensemble, um, the players within a section are somehow able to gel together so that when you hear an orchestral performance, um, the quality that you get on one night is going to be very similar to the quality of performance you get on another night. And so we think that decoders that work with these network-wide interactions, as opposed to smaller brain units um, at the level of electrodes, are going to provide a smoother and more robust decoding. And this is a possibility that we're currently uh, working on developing.